Our third lesson in organics is going to cover two separate topics, and they're not really related too much, just we have them in the same lesson. So we've talked briefly about aromatics in our first lesson in this uh, unit. We talked about it being one of the organic families when we first saw what an alkane, an alkene, and an alkyne was. So we'll look at this as our next organic family. And then there's just a couple slides about isomers at the end. So this is kind of what benzene looks like. And benzene is what needs to be in a molecule in order to be an aromatic, just like how you needed to have one double bond in order to be an alkene or one triple bond in order to be an alkyne. You need this guy in order to be an aromatic. It's our functional group. So we clearly have a hexagon, so we have six carbons in our ring, and then it's hard to see because there's so much stuff written on here, but we also have three alternating double bonds here. So it goes carbon, carbon, single bond, carbon, carbon, double bond, single again, double, single, double again. So if we were to name this right now with all the rules we've used so far, we would call it cyclo, seeing as it's a shape, hexa, because there's six carbons, triene, because there are three double bonds. We give it the name benzene now, just because it's very different from most alkenes and alkynes, things with multiple bonds. It's very stable, and actually when we have double and triple bonds, Typically, those molecules are very unstable, very easy to react. This guy, however, not so much. And that's what makes it so different from what we've seen in the past and why it's a completely different organic family. Um, if you're in the 4U course, I talked briefly in the first unit about resonance structures. So you'll see benzene drawn in a whole bunch of different ways. So these ones look kind of strange, but it's got the double bonds alternating. And then I've got what I referred to in our first unit as a resonance arrow, a double headed arrow. And now this looks pretty much the same, but was a double bond over here is now a single bond. And what was a single bond is now a double bond. They've kind of shifted their spots. So we've kind of shown that we can draw it in either format, just like when we were drawing um, polyatomic ions in 4U, we were showing where we could draw the double bond. And I said, none of these are totally right. This double bond isn't always here. This double bond isn't always here. And on the, this side, they're not always here. They're actually all identical carbon-carbon bonds. We can't quite identify where the single bonds are and where the double bonds are. So don't worry too, too much about that. Just in case you're like, I've never learned that and we've been talking about single and double bonds all this time. But because of that, you'll probably see benzene drawn this way most often. And honestly, when you're drawing your own benzene structures, it's just, it's much simpler. So we do still have that hexagonal shape to show that it is six carbons. And instead of showing specifically where three alternating double bonds might be, we just draw a big circle in the middle. So totally up to you and depending on where you find stuff online if you're doing extra research or where I found things for worksheets, um, you might still see benzene with the three alternating double bonds and that's totally fine. Uh, so you can draw it that way if you wish much easier just to do this though, honestly. So this circle represents those three alternating double bonds. So let's see some names because that seems to be what we <laughs> what we mostly do. So for the most part, um, benzenes are a little bit simpler than a lot of those cyclics that we've been naming, especially some of those cyclics on a worksheet. So the root word, the kind of like that suffix is always just gonna be benzene and we'll attach anything that we have on our ring as a prefix. So here we've got a whole bunch of our halogens. So we've just got a fluoro on there. We can just smack fluoro right onto benzene. We've got a bromo sticking off. 
bromobenzene, chlorobenzene. Um, we really haven't seen nitro pop up too often, but here it is floating on a benzene ring. Um, just like other cyclics, when we only have one thing coming off, um, or we looked at it a little bit when we had cycloalkenes, we don't have to label where it is because it would be understood that this fluorine or any of these guys will be popping off of the first carbon. So you could say one dash fluorobenzene if you really wanted to, just in case uh, you're afraid of forgetting to number in other situations, uh, but it's not totally necessary. So these are all perfectly fine answers without numbers. We also have um, some harder names. Some of them you're gonna have to memorize and some of them you could name in different ways. So these first two are always gonna be named this way. So benzoic acid is when you have a group of COOH all popping off of one bond, benzoic acid. It'll make more sense after our next lesson because we'll learn a little bit about carboxylic acids. Phenol is when you have an OH, an alcohol group, a hydroxyl, popping off the same carbon. So that carbon is bonded to an oxygen and that oxygen is bonded to a hydrogen. It's always gonna be called phenol. That OL will also make a little bit more sense when we discuss the organic family of alcohols in our next lesson. These guys could be named different things because we know a different word for both NH2 and CH3. NH2 could be an amino and CH3 is a methyl that pops up pretty often. So we could call this an amino benzene and we could call this a methyl benzene because they're both those groups that we've named before and we've got an actual different word for it. So I would never make you use the word aniline or toluene but you might come into some um, questions where it's used that way and you see the word aniline, so you'd have to be able to, to draw it from that. Anyways, um, obviously we could also have multiple groups coming off. So if we do, we want, just like we did with cyclics, our lowest combination of numbers. So these guys are right next door to each other Let's just give them one and two. It'd be the lowest number if we add those two things together, right? So we're still saying dichloro because there's two of them and listing both numbers as to where they are. Same thing here. There's just one spot separating them. I think we'd all give it a one three. Make sure we still write di because we've got two of them. Not too often you'll see more than two things coming off of benzene. Like I said at the start, uh, they're relatively unreactive, quite stable. So um, we usually don't have like some gargantuan benzene figure like we've seen in the cyclics, but still possible. So when you have more than two things, that's kind of when it gets more difficult. We can see though that two things are side by side. So that's usually a hint, hey, Let's give these like one and two and make it a little bit easier for us to number it. And so we have going one, two, three, four. I think none of us would do this. Maybe the other option you would actually consider would be calling this guy carbon one and this guy carbon two. But then you'd see three, four, five. We could get this car, um, chlorine whereas it was four over here. So I'm thinking none of us would do this, but uh, it's still kind of one of those things. Do I go clockwise or do I go counterclockwise when I'm naming? Um, one other thing when it comes to numbering would be that we have those special groups. And when we have a special group on our molecule, that special group always has to be carbon number one. So we've called it a toluene. So we've made this CH3 a special group. This CH3 and this benzene all are a toluene. The only thing we actually have to label in front of it 
would be this nitro. So automatically, because we've called it a toluene, the stuff that makes it a toluene, this methyl group, has to be coming off of carbon one. And we may as well keep labeling in a clockwise direction in order to make this carbon number two as, as low as possible. This OH group makes it special, makes it the phenyl. So this OH and this entire benzene is all phenyl. We just have to name these three bromines. So this has to be carbon one. We can either go in a clockwise direction and have to wait all the way until carbon number four, five, six, or we can easily just go backwards, go two, three, four, three of them. So try bromo before saying, yes, there's a phenyl on the carbon one and OH. That COOH group makes it a benzoic acid. So that with the whole benzene makes it a benzoic acid. The only thing we have to name is this nitro on the opposite side. Kind of nice when it's on the opposite side because no matter which way you go, you'll get to carbon number four. So if I went clockwise, if I went counterclockwise, you should get to carbon four if it's on the opposite side. So just one of those extra rules to think about if you have one of those fancy groups. So that's if we were to look at a benzene ring and labeling with numbers. There is a different way actually of naming benzenes if there are two groups sticking off of our benzene ring. And depending on where those two groups are, we have three different names we can use. So if we had something at positions one and two, instead of using numbers, we would call it an ortho. And we'll see an example on the next slide. If we have something at one and three, it's now a meta. And if we have something at one and four, it's now called a para. So I just have a little point here saying, I'll, I'll never make you name this way. You might see me give you a name with an ortho, meta, or para, and you'd have to draw it from there. But um, there's, no, there's no reason for you to have to use ortho, meta, or para if you'd prefer to stick to numbers. So once again, this is only if you have two groups. So if you had something with three groups or one group, we can't use these at all. It has to be two groups coming off. So those two groups can be the same stuff, like all chlorines, or it can be two different things. So all across the top, we've got two things. These two chlorines are at positions one and two. So instead of saying one, two, dichlorobenzene, instead of using that one, two, I'm just gonna put an O, o sorry, for ortho. These guys are at positions one, and three. So instead of saying one, three, dichloro, I'm going to take out that one, three, and I'll make it an M. I find when I look at this, it also makes like an M shape. So it's easy to remember meta for that. And then if you have something at one and four, they're at opposite sides. Instead of saying one, four, dichloro, is now a para. So it's given just the P. And I know we had that rule of saying um, dashes are between numbers and letters, but we still use a dash because technically these O, M, and P's are showing us locations, just like how those numbers did before. Uh, it looks a little bit different when you've got two different groups, because remember when we would have to say, hey, this is a, a one bromo, two chloro benzene, I think we would name it. Now, because the number is all going out front for that one, two, we're labeling in an O, that bromo and chloro just gets glued right together because there's no need to put a number before chloro. So everything just gets glued right together because kind of all of our numbers are now out front. So instead of calling this a one chloro, three nitro benzene, Chloro and nitro get glued together in alphabetical order, and that one three moves to the front, but we call it an M for meta. Opposite sides, we're at a one and a four. 
it's a P for one and four, and we see, oh, that OH is a special thing. It's going to be a phenyl. So now instead of calling it a 4-fluorophenyl, we're going to call it a P-fluorophenyl to show that it's at position 4 and OH was obviously at number 1. So this is not well liked. People do not like these ones. I can still remember a question on my grade 12 high school exam of this benzene with going up and going down the word shoot. And it was like one of those like word problem solving things and with parachute and that sticks to me. And it was probably also because I did not like using ortho, meta, and para when I was taking grade 12 the first time around. So you might just want to keep naming it the way we've been naming it and that's completely fine. All I just want to be able to point out is sometimes maybe you'll be given this name so you'd have to be able to draw it from there but if you're given the molecule instead by all means if you feel more comfortable using numbers do it that way so that almost summarizes all of our aromatics there's just one extra thing that won't come up too often and that's uh, that a benzene ring can actually pop off like a branch like how we've been naming methyls and ethyls and things like that we could also have benzene coming off as a branch. And if it does, obviously we have that kind of YL um, suffix like we have for the rest of the things, but the start of it is phenyl. So not to be confused with phenol, that OH group, but phenyl, if we see that in a name, it means that it's coming off as a branch. Uh, still put into alphabetical order, We've got a chlorine, we've got a methyl group, we've got a phenyl. Those are all in alphabetical order. And if we just want to really quickly look at this uh, name, how we get a pentene is we can see we have four carbons here, right? That's pretty clear. And then we can still take our highlighter a little bit more and without lifting off the page, either go down or either go up to get that five carbon chain. Then when we're numbering it, we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's where the two pentene comes in, where that double bond is. We've also got the methyl group, depending on which one you chose as your methyl, coming off of number two. Chloro would have been three, and the phenyl on four. So that finishes the aromatics part. There's a worksheet on that. Isomers is just a small part that we've glued to this lesson, and it will kind of um, relate back to some of our stuff. So we've got two different types of isomers. So the first one are structural isomers. So structural isomers are always going to have the same chemical formula, so like C5H12, but those atoms, the carbons and the hydrogens, are going to be arranged in a different way. So we'd have the same formula, but when we name the molecule, we would come up with a different name. So sometimes really hard to see, and you might have to actually count things out. So pentane would be if we took those five carbons and make them straight. Even though this is a completely different name, if we were to count everything out, we still have one, two, three, four, five carbons. If we were to count out all the hydrogens, we still have 12 hydrogens. So with the exact same chemical formula, it's obviously a different molecule, a different substance, and have different properties. But it is a structural isomer to pentane. And so would 2,2-dimethylpropane because it has the exact same chemical formula. Another example of that kind of stuff would be those ortho, meta, and paras we saw with the chlorines going from 1 and 2 one and three and one and four. If we were to write out the actual um, formula of those, they'd all be the exact same. We just decided to pop those chlorines onto different carbon bonds. So those are structural isomers. The other type of isomer we have, and we'll see it a bit more rarely, are geometric isomers. And sometimes they're referred to as cis-trans isomers. And these are a bit harder to see 
just because um, they have a different 3D arrangement. So obviously very hard to see 3D on a page and we've bypassed using these trans and cis um, prefixes so far. So something we really haven't touched on. So what do cis and trans actually mean? Cis means same. And so if we're looking at a chain or at groups, they're gonna be on the same side, same side being the same side of a double bond. Trans means opposite or across. So our um, chain or our groups are gonna be on opposite sides of the double bond. So when I say sides of the double bond though, what I mean is if I were to take a line and draw it through the double bond this way, not kind of this way, but with the double bond. If I were to draw it with the double bond, I have a bromine on top of my plane and a bromine below my plane. So if they're on opposite sides of the double bond, that's what makes this a trans. If I were to somehow be able to flip this and have this hydrogen at the bottom and this bromine at the top, and I were to do the same thing and draw a plane, both bromines would be at the top. They would both be on the same side and that would be a cis bond. So the thing about this is you need to have a double bond because double bonds are super rigid. If we had a model kit and if I could show you, I wouldn't be able to twist these carbons and make these bonds move. If it were an alkane, I would be able to. So this won't exist in cis-trans if this double bond is not here. It has to be an alkene for us. So that's if it's groups. We can also have our main chain be cis or trans. So we do the same thing. We would draw a line right through and make a plane. And we notice that our chain, this octane, there should be eight carbons, would all exist above the plane on the same side. So that makes it a cis. If I were to take this CH2, CH3, and put it below, and this hydrogen would move up, well, then we would have this piece of the chain above, and this piece of the chain would now be below. That's when we would have a trans three octane. And the three comes from the fact that this double bond would be on carbon one, two, three, right there. So those are geometric isomers. We'll figure out a little bit on this slide how to make sure we label it correctly. So your worksheet will have a whole bunch of um, examples where you're given two molecules and you have to say if they are identical structural isomers geometric isomers or completely different molecules. So how can we kind of go through some steps and figure that one out? So our first thing would be to find the chemical formulas of both molecules. If they are not the same, they're going to be different compounds or different molecules. There's no way you can be an isomer without having the exact same formula. If we do have the same formula, we have to go through a few extra steps. So maybe check the arrangement. Um, when we've been naming or when you've been drawing, um, we've seen some funky kind of chains that maybe are very kinky. They are in a straight line. That could be the same thing of some of these. You could be actually looking at identical molecules, but one might be written with like a bunch of kinks in the chain and making it super bendy, making it look like it could be a different molecule, but it actually is the exact same one. So check for that, check for the longest chain you can make, maybe try to like name it a little bit, see if you come out with the same name, because if they are the same arrangement, no matter how it's written on the piece of paper, identical molecules should come out with the same name. If you have the exact same formula and you're coming out with different names, like kind of that pentane we saw earlier and there was a, a butane right next to it, if you get different names, you're looking at structural isomers. And if you see double bonds, 
and between the two you can tell that maybe the chain continues to be on the same side of the plane versus the other molecule goes on the opposite side of the plane well then you have cis-trans isomers or geometric isomers whichever one you want to call it 